capitals because the moon is going to move in front of the sun. On August 21st, if you're anywhere in North America, if you're anywhere in the northern part of South America, you are going to see a partial solar eclipse. If you make the trek and you're on a very thin line about 70 miles wide, goes from Oregon to South Carolina, you will see a total solar eclipse. You may not understand why all that excitement yet, but it is a total solar eclipse. The moon is going to come, go exactly in front of the sun, block it out. To see the total, when it's total, you don't need any safety precautions. It'll be about as bright as the quarter moon. You can look at it, you can stare at it, you can look at binoculars, you can look at the telescope, you can take all the pictures. How do I take a picture of a total solar eclipse and make it good? <laughs> Just snap, snap your camera. I've never seen a bad total solar eclipse photo. Wide angle, narrow angle, and so forth. The problem is on the partial solar eclipse. So let me tell you what you do not do. You do not look through exposed film. You do not look through exposed x-ray film. You do not look through plastic uh, 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 garbage bags. You do not look through a CD disc. And then there are various other things. All of those reduce the visible light. But the problem is the infrared and the ultraviolet. And what happens physically, the infrared light will actually warm up the fluid in your eyeball. A little temperature change, just a little rise, and it can start to do damage. The ultraviolet, if it gets in, you stare at it for a long time, will actually damage some of the cells. So that's the time to be careful. And there are very easy ways of being careful about this. The most common way, the safest way, if we've all heard of the pinhole camera, you just take any type of uh, opaque sheet, like a piece of cardboard, and put a little hole in it, and just project it. Ordinarily, the sun is a disk. But because the moon's going to start moving in front of it, it turns into a crescent. And you'll be able to see that. Another very common one is without telling your mother, you go get the cheese grater. <laughs> and you hold the cheese grater up. And you hold it on yourself with the sun like this. And you'll see dozens of little crescents. Oh. Oh. And what is really exciting, if you have a tree nearby, ordinarily the sun, the sunlight comes through the leaves of the trees, and all of those are pinhole cameras. And so the sun's there, the tree's here, the shadow's here. You'll see scores of hundreds of these crescents. And then if the wind blows, these things start moving around like this. And as we used to say in the 70s, it's really tripping. <laughs> OK? So those are the safest ways. Those are the indirect ways to see it. The five dogs are going to look at the sun. How do I do it? Well, this has become very common, these glasses. This is a plastic sheet. And the plastic sheet has a very thin coat of metal on it. Usually it's aluminum. And these can be got for like a dollar tread wire. The wire is going to have to be here. Um, so this is the most common. The only thing to be aware of you don't even with these, you don't want to just sit here and stare at the sun continuously. In fact, it will take about an hour and 20 minutes from the time that the moon just begins the edge of the sun until it crosses. So if you just stare at it, there really is a capacity. So just look up at it for uh, 35 to 10 minutes, and you'll see it reaching the sun. Now, if you're a real purist about this, what you do, you 
you go to a welder supply store and you get one of these. This is the number 14 welder's class. And it is actually printed, it's required by the government that they print which filter it is. It must be 14 or higher. If you go below 14, you're going to have trouble with the infrared and the ultraviolet. But they do sell 14s, and they have heard people sell a 16. And you, again, can so go out and look at this. But for common sense, and there isn't anything really moving up there, just watch it for a while, and then check it in another 5, 10 minutes. So number 14 motors are. So is there any basic questions about safety here? How would it let the Pardon? If I this way, the sudden got in it. Sure. Sure, it works. And again, I, I would recommend you don't just sit there and look at the sun all the time. Glance up at it. There, as I will, will mention in the next part of this, there's all kinds of exciting things going on around you, especially if you're, if you're in the path of two power. But you don't want to miss. I think you need to There have that. been people who have kept these on to a very totality and they, they don't see anything at that point because it's just dark. <laughs> <laughs> and there are people, and there's good reason to do this. If you're going to be in the path of totality, people will, will, will keep themselves in darkness until. Or they'll, well, or, or, or they'll, they're, they'll, uh, it's to adjust your eyes to the sudden darkness. And the darkness comes very, very quickly. But before I move on to talk about what's all the fuss about, anybody have any doubts about how to see this? Don't, don't tell your children to stay indoors. <laughs> Let them go out and see this thing, okay? Yes. So if you're going to be in the path of to total totality, right? you're at 10,000 feet, you can still look directly at it? Yes. But it doesn't matter. If you were in space, you'd be okay to look at it. Right. That's, do you plan to be at 10,000 feet? <laughs> Actually, I do. I'm going to be okay. in, in the wilderness in my own. Well, I'm in this. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And you, you, uh, you might see something that very few people in history have ever seen. <clears throat> And that's the shadow approach. I'll uh, try to remember to get back to why why that is so unusual. And there was another question. Right. You have to see what number. They will all have numbers on them. In fact, back here there's a little thing about the government. This is rated by the government, and it's rated. It has a T one four H on it. If it doesn't have that, I wouldn't use it because it's been tested. Where are those available? They were, uh, I bought these in a welder supply uh -huh. store. I actually bought this in Denver. Uh -huh. okay. And I bought everything that he had. Uh -huh. yeah, he had six, so I bought them. <laughs> Was there? Yes. Hi, Joe. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm sorry I came in a little late. I'm Mark Seibel with the Rose City Astronomers. They're asking me to go up and speak in the Central Oregon State Parks uh, in a few more days for about a week before the event. I, I did this in 1979. It was very easy. Oh, uh, there's no trick, as everybody knows. All you needed was an old-fashioned camera, uh, a 35 millimeter with film in it. As wow. John was saying, you can't take a bad eclipse photo. It's true. I would, I would hearken to maybe talk about uh, damaging cameras. I'm not worried about my eyes. I don't wear sunglasses. Usually, I broke my glasses when I was wearing my sunglasses. But uh, uh, I guess people are worried about damaging their light sensors and their cameras today. In the film days, we didn't worry about that. But now that the new digital cameras can be damaged easily, you so start filming very early an hour before with a mostly exposed sun, as you were saying, you could probably burn your light sensor and your camera out for about 10 minutes, I suppose. Well, that's right. I mean, it's, it's the same as today if you went out and did it. Right. You have to remember, even when there's just a little ray of sunlight coming, it is still blindingly bright. And a friend gave me some infrared, uh, actual film that photographers use in studios. It's just big, clear plastic. It's called infrared filtration. I guess that stops all the heat from harming your light sensor. I'm going to use some of that. Yeah, I'm not familiar with what yeah. that is. And there's neutral density filters people are going to use over their prizes. And there's also uh, mylar film. 
Right. Mylar blocks up most of the UV, I guess, doesn't it? That's right. It'll yeah. do both the infrared and the UV. What they call the white light filters for right. on telescopes. Mm -hmm. just show and then that's what's used in glasses. Yeah, I, I've I've actually, used scopes. yeah, I've actually looked through an H alpha filter for over ten thousand dollars with the public and did it across the nation. Like thousands of people look through it. You've seen H alpha, so I'm sure the influence of the sun. I'm trying to encourage people if they go somewhere where there's astronomers, try to get near an H alpha filter and, and ask to look through it. They're gonna beg you to pull you over and have you look through it because <laughs> it'll show you the sun like a big Big, huge lava ball active. It's beautiful before. Right. But anyway, hey, I was just going to ask you if you had any recommendations about the, the, what I mentioned, the infrared. No, I'm not. I guess it, I don't know enough about it. I guess it deflects all the heat away from whatever it's shielding, but it allows the visitors to come through. So. Well, thanks for being here. It's just great to hear you're passionate about this. Like a lot of us, I'm trying to get people to go out and look. People in Portland are saying, we're just going to stay in Portland and watch 99%. That's just the same thing. Is it, isn't 99% good enough? I said, no, it's not. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, just about the camera, the camera filters being damaged more so than our eyes. I, as an astronomer, I'm not going to wear any protection. We don't do that. We're just worried about the public doing that because they'll stare. They're still stare at it when they know it's not right to do it. They don't know it's not right. They don't know, because they've never done any observations like astronomers have, so they don't know when to look. But the biggest, like John was saying, the biggest fear we have as astronomers is people wear these eclipse glasses, they'll forget to take them off and look at the beautiful corona. They'll never see it with the eclipse glasses on. They'll miss it. They'll miss the biggest part of the whole eclipse, as you said. That's and you, right. And you'll wonder, you'll wonder years later why you missed it, because you didn't take those darn eclipse glasses off. Yes. So there's an over-concern about this safety thing. Okay, the question is about the glasses. The sunglasses, some of them say UV protection. And then, then there's the mylar. This is what you want, the mylar. You look through it now, and it's all black. But if you went outside today and you looked up at the sun, you would see a disc up there. Would you say I can buy that from uh, Ben Meyer? Yeah, Ben Meyer has it for like a dollar. I think it's hardware, some of those have them for a dollar. The library is going to have some. We have hundreds. They're giving them 